All right, after watching the film, uh, obviously we're disappointed that we didn't get a win in the game, but uh, look back at the reasons why. Uh, did some things really better in the game at times. Did some played some good football, and at times, you know, let some plays and opportunities get away. And that's what it's got to get down to. You got to make every play on every situation in big moments and big key plays. And we had some that we could have, you know, we just got to execute at the right time, call the right things, be in the right things, and 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 get those things ironed out. But I thought our kids played hard. Thought they were physical in the game. I thought offensively, I thought we ran the ball much better, uh, more with more consistency. Uh, one of the things we eliminated on offense was a lot of the penalties. But the week before, we had some motions, holding some things that shot ourselves in the foot. Uh, last week, I think we had just the one motion penalty that we were able to overcome uh, on that side of the ball uh, in, in that scenario, which helps us. You're not getting negative plays. You're not getting behind the change, which I think helped us sustain drives and move drives because we consistently moved the ball uh, for the most part. Had a couple uh, situations we did one time on a second and two. We never got – that second two ended up not getting the first down, but you know, unfortunately, had the interception off the first drive. Uh, that's about one there. We got to make that play, got to make that catch. But you know, we can put the ball off the back number. We can put it on the front number and get a better angle on our route and clean that up. And that that gave them some things. Our defense did a really good job on that at occasion of stopping holding to a field goal opportunity, which they made. Uh, and what we did, and we scored offensively. Uh, uh, no, offensively, got to finish a couple drives in the red zone, had opportunities to do it. Just got to make those plays when there was different reasons we did. We missed a block on the protection one time, thought we had it, and the other one I thought we could have read the other way uh, and, and played. And uh, thought special team, thought we punted the ball extremely well, thought we covered well. The one kickoff return that we were able to return, uh, we hit for a nice return to about the 33, 35-yard line, doing a really good job there. We had one punt return. That was a really big play in the game that, that got us down to the 50, and they called it. But that I still, I, I, I'll, I'll wait to get a ruling on. I, I totally disagree on how it happened. I know how they called it, but I know what happened. He was blocking another guy and got knocked in the back of another guy. He wasn't even, it was, they weren't even participating together. So I thought that was a big play in the game, but we'll look and see. Uh, defensively, uh, you know, excuse me, Seth Small was outstanding in the game. And Seth was outstanding hitting his kicks. He has been all year. He's been making his kicks, our snaps, and hitting crucial kicks and big plays. At the time, uh, I thought, uh, you know, uh, going back uh, offensively at that, going back to the end, I wish we had got the two-minute drive and we could have finished that one drive. But, you know, unfortunately, we had a we had a you know had a pass and a negative run, so uh, got that got within got within two points there. Now defensively, uh, you know, I thought we didn't tackle as well in space, missed tackles, uh, leveraging the ball. Things and uh, not enough. We got to find ways to get better pass rush. We brought pressure at times. We didn't get there. They blocked us pretty well. We got a couple. I think two or three sacks in the game. I can think of right now off the top of my head. It was two or three. I can't remember exactly. But uh, got to find ways to get more pressure. Mix it up. They did a good job on third down and they hit some crucial. We got a crucial penalty on a third and sixteen, which cost us about seven minutes of time, which we would have had the ball back in the fourth quarter, like six, seven minutes earlier with more opportunities that they kept and then ate up about six more minutes of the clock, which is critical. And then on the next last drive was a third and seven that they were able to convert that, uh, you know, we didn't, we didn't get covered down in, uh, in where we were at. And uh, that cost us a lot of time. And then uh, at the end, you know, uh, didn't have you know, as much time. I had a chance still with two minutes and like 30 seconds to go. We might possibly get a drive, and we didn't. But you know, there was a lot of fans and butts in the game. I uh, thought we did, did get better in some areas. Some areas we got to find a way to make better plays and certain things we do, and we got to coach them better. We got to put them in better position and go back to fundamentals. And like I say, there's, you know, wish you were somewhere here and say there's a magical formula or a potion. It's about going back and being fundamentally sound in the things we do and our concepts, our schemes, and when having 11 individual battles and you win in your battle within the concept of the offense, the defense, or the special teams allows us to be successful and, and how we coach them and put them in those situations. So we'll get back to that, play hard. The guys, again, obviously, we're very disappointed and down. But understand that we there's a lot of football left and a lot of work we can do and a lot of room that we can get better and we have to do a better job coaching and playing. So that's it. Questions? Down front, Brent. Would you mind taking us through the process of play calling? How involved Coach Dickey is? I know it's obviously mm -hmm. a passion of yours. You got to be on your toes. Got to be. No, we are. We all have suggestions, and we have our calls going in the game and where we're at, and gaining information up top, what they're in, what they're doing, and how it's going. But at the end of the day, I call the plays. Right. And, and I guess my question is, how do you do that? And I'm not saying. Philosophy-wise, I mean, actually, how does the process work? What do you mean? Just, just call the play on the headset, and they signal in. That's it. Yeah. yeah. And how often do you interact with Coach Dickey? Every play. Every play. Okay. And, and, and other coaches on the staff are. And while drives going, they'll be getting me down in distance, field positions, and we know what we've talked about going in that drive, what we're trying to do, what we're trying to accomplish. 
And you talked about defensive adjustments as the game went on and, you know, you tried man and things like that. What did you see from the tape in terms of? You know, we didn't get home with some pressures and they blocked us and we had to, we had to tightly cover some, got to cover a little better to allow that to get home and then play and, you know, get, get, get there if we can or maybe come up with a few others and got to tackle in space better. We had some opportunities. We just didn't tackle in space and we grabbed, had a holding. We had a cover down, had a perfect scenario with about 14 minutes to go and unfortunately got a holding call. On a pass interference, it costs us a big play. So, I mean, there's a lot of things we can do better. And obviously, listen, when you don't win a game, you go back and you reevaluate everything. You look at everything. You why you did. You ask your why you made that call. Why you made this call. Why you made that call. You do that each and every day of everything you do. When you win, still making sure why you do it. But when you lose, you're evaluating everything. And like I said, we just got to coach better and play better. The left on the aisle, David. Jimbo, how do you coach against allowing the uh, negativity, the losing, to penetrate the locker room? You block it out. Turn it off. Turn the social media off. Turn y'all off. I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean you you got to you got to lock into that that room and only in that room and the people and family and and understand that at the end of the day, listen, y'all are doing your job. Everybody everybody has their opinions. Everybody's doing their job. Quit. When you write something good, don't listen. When you write something bad, don't listen. Move on. Eliminate the clutter. And that's that's you have to learn to do that. And in our society at this age and this this young group, it's a very hard thing to do because they live, eat, and survive on it. They've got to learn to turn it off and, and understand that's part of growing up. That you're going to have to grow up, and people are going to doubt you. They're going to love you. They're going to all based off what you do on a Saturday. And that's that's the world we're in. I and mean, there's nothing wrong with that. And that's what people, it's what fans should do, and it's what writers should do. And but you have to eliminate and understand who's really with you and what what has to happen. And Who's going to, you know, how you got to listen. And when you have down times or bad moments, you got to circle the wagons and trust the people right there with you and that are in the trenches with you and play ball. At the end of the day, what you got to do it takes maturity. Back and it's hard for guys, hard for young men. Sorry, Coach. Back behind the lights, Tyler. Coach, this team's no stranger to playing Alabama or mm-hmm. even playing the top-ranked team. So th- does this team right now have what it takes to, to, to pull off the upset on Saturday? And well, what's well, that going to take? If we practice well and play well, and we will. We have to go get a good plan. We have to practice it. And we have to uh, perfect it during the week, and then we have to execute it on Saturday. And is there any more, I guess, excitement or energy knowing that uh, you guys have them at home, and just to have a, a team like that at Kyle? No, nah, listen. Every every game to us as a player should be the same. Your opponents are faceless. That's great to be in a big game and all that, but you can't look at that. You have to play the same no matter what you do, how you do it. And how you prepare it. Each and every week has to be exactly the same. And I know people don't believe that and don't think about it. If you're going to be, if you're going to do it and do it well consistently, that's what you have to do. Go second row, Olin, and then Travis. Yeah, a couple of things, Jimbo. Mm-hmm. Uh, first of all, you said uh, pointed out that uh, made some progress in the running game, and how much of that uh, do you think was a byproduct of Kella, uh, Kenya moving back inside? Well, I don't, could be either way. I mean. I don't – in that game we played well, but Kenyon was on the line before tackle too. So, I mean, just depending on scheme and how each, each game plan went. But he did a really – he played a nice game inside. And hopefully we'll continue to play that way. As a, as a veteran football coach, uh, and I know you've shown it here before that, that you don't mind putting freshmen out, but do, uh, are you uncomfortable at all with the idea of having two freshmen – True freshman starting in your offensive line. I'm sure that's no. Not I the, mean that that those are the best players right now. Those are the guys that play the best, and that's what you have to do. I mean, we got we got some guys that are banged and bruised and had some injuries, and guys that have had you know haven't been able to have unfortunately had to get medical. And some guys we've recruited, I thought were going to be really good players, but that's that's the world we're in right now. We've got some injuries on the other part of it. I mean, like I say, Luke Matthews just he had surgery today. That you know he's out. You know, which uh, which will be out the rest of the year. Y'all you know, know you'll get the injuries, but I mean, you know, there's older guys, but those are the best guys right now playing, and they're doing, doing a really solid job. Would you like in a perfect world? I'd like to be in 1970 uh, again, where everybody red shirt, every freshman was red shirted. I know that sounds crazy to a point where you let them mature and grow into the kind of players they can be, and let them do that. I mean, in the perfect world, I mean, before they do that, but that's not the world we're in. Guys playing as freshmen are out of here by juniors. I mean, or you know. A red shirt junior year, whatever it is. So, I mean, that's that's the world we live in. Back then, they didn't come to you at 320 pounds either. Right? Well, they, they, but it was all relative to what they were playing against. The other guys they were playing against weren't 320 either. We we'll go left side, Justin, and down front, Travis. Coach, obviously, you're around Zach every day. 
Where do you think he is confidence wise right now, and how do you make sure he gets? I think he progressed, and and in the game, there's just plays. Anytime you hear the quarterback and you don't win, everything is going to be scrutinized, and every throw you touch the ball every time. And there's some there's there some throws and plays he'd like to have back surely, and that. But I, that's mostly every quarterback you ever play. And unfortunately, if we'd have made one more play and won the game. Maybe it wouldn't be pushed as much, but that's the world. Again, that's part of it. I think he's learning, growing. I think his confidence. We, as you watch film with him, he understands things, and he's getting better and better each play. And you know, and, and I think he believes in himself wholeheartedly. And I think our players believe in him. Okay. Well, quick follow up on those couple of throws to Widemeyer thing on the corner route. He was wide it, open, and his missing. Anias was on the. He had one dialed up again in the end zone. Yeah, oh, that, that one there was a little bit different. The one on the on on the at the end. He was is about rare. There was a little bit of change in that route that had to happen because of the coverage and. He had to hold it and throw it a little bit differently. The, the first one, he should have just he should have zanged. He could have made the second one, should have made the second one. But also, there was a little bit more difference to that in steps and angles and things that went on to that, too. But definitely, he missed uh, Wattemeyer coming off the end zone. Because yeah, we only had four possessions. That was a big one because we didn't make that one. Then we scored a touchdown. Then we had the field goal. Then we had the two-minute drive. That was the only times we had it. And uh, that would have been a big play coming off. Two real quick, Coach. When, when you talk about blocking out the negativity, have you found at all that that's maybe a little bit harder for the guys because they've had to be so engaged with social media with the NIL stuff this year? They don't have to be. <laughs> that's, that's true. Huh? No, I mean, no. I mean, I think they're learning that. But that's a lesson. It's not just this year. I mean, listen, guys have lived on social media for the last, what, 10 years predominantly, 10, maybe 15, probably 10, probably logistically. I mean, consistently the way guys do it. Uh, no, that's just a pro byproduct of you know what they are and who they are, and they have to they have to learn to process it. I mean, that's that's the world we live in. And, and how have you seen the game change with having guys like Ryan Pitzinger and the sports psychology staff on the sidelines, even to where they can talk before the game, right after the game, during the game with guys who might. We've be been having... doing that a long time. Mm -hmm. I've been part of that on teams I've been on for over twenty some years now, and I and I believe that. I think the biggest threat to athletes today is mental health. It's not physical; it's mental because of all the scrutiny and all the social media and all the things that are going on. You have no idea the psyche of guys and how they do it and the long-lasting effects of everything that happens to them. I don't, people have no earthly idea that they, what they go through. And that's the, biggest, that's the biggest detriment in our game today, period. And so you have to deal with those things. And we've been dealing with them for a long time. We've had, I've had guys on staff, full staff, when I was assistant, when I was a head coach for, for years, we've kept – a big part of that, and that, and understanding how to think, understanding failures, understanding successes. I mean, both sides, both ends of that, failure and success. I mean, that's just the world we live in today because we all think we have to tell everybody what we're doing, why we're doing it, and all the good things. And, but then again, that's that's what we are. So I think it is a very big part of our world and things that go on today, and for those kids. So that's a big part of our commitment to those kids to help them deal with all the issues and different. Not not not, not just good. I mean, not just bad, excuse me, but good things too. I mean, that's all part of it. Understand them how to keep them consistent and, 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 and deal with all the ups and downs and things and what to do, what not to say, and what to expose yourself to in the social media world. And, and how does that help you all as coaches when you can have them in that, in that moment? Oh, it right? helps them big time because you can, have the, you can have someone right there that you, as a coach, you get used to dealing with that too, and there's a lot of things you can say, but at the same time having professionals there that deal with that all the time that you can immediately get, get them – time with or talk with or just have a conversation with. Go to the left. Hi, Coach Fisher. Hello. Jennifer Streeter with the battalion. Against Mississippi State, we saw Haynes King move off of his scooter and onto crutches on the sidelines. How is he progressing in his recovery and still staying on the playbook? Oh, he's good. He's, he's, he's in every practice. I mean, he's in every play. If you look, he's talking to uh, Zach every time he comes off the field, gaining information, helping, talking. I mean, Haynes is in every meeting, everything we do. He loves it. And I mean, he's healing, but it's going to be – I mean, he has to heal up. He, he, he has a broken – Broken ankle, so that doesn't just you know it'll be a long time. I think we're gonna make sure he's fully healthy in the things he does, and he's but he's progressing very nicely in what he's doing. But his his mind is into the like, game game plan, calls, meetings, helping, seeing everything. He's doing everything he can possibly do. Coach will stay on the left on the aisle. That's Kay with the battalion. So Saturday will be another matchup for you and head coach Nick Saban. <laughs> what can you say about Nick Saban and just his success at Alabama? Well, I mean, it's it, it's it's extraordinary. He's done a great job. He's built a great culture there. Uh, they understand how to win. They understand how to do these things, and and they've built it in there. And those players are, are playing it, and to maintain it. And like I say, they they do a great job. They're fun. As you watch them, everybody they're extremely talented, but they're very fundamentally sound. When you watch them, they're a very fundamentally sound football team, and uh, that's the key. Like I always say, ordinary things they do the ordinary things very very well, 
And now their, their athleticism is spectacular, but at the same time, their fundamentals are very good, and they do them very well. well third row on the aisle, Ryan, and then we'll go left, Cease. Hey, Coach, we heard from Jalen Weidermeyer earlier today, and he said he felt like his breakout game of his whole career, honestly, was two years ago against Alabama. So now two years later, what kind of growth have you seen from him, and what do you expect going into this same matchup here? At oh, hopefully. He, he, Jalen is an outstanding player. He's learning. Uh, there's another to deal with success and failures and different things that happen, highs and lows, expectations, things that go on. And and if you know if you don't get the numbers, but you know, I thought he played one of his best games last week. I thought he played a really good football game last week when you watch the film. I mean, blocking a lot of little things, route running, uh, we got in the ball, caught a touchdown, caught a couple, had some other balls we could have hit him with and tried to target him with. But his routes are clean. I mean, really gotten better and better, and he's progressing as a player. And I thought played a really good game. And 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 like I say, last week and and dealing with as I say. The thing he has, to, he's learned to do is there's high expectations on him, and sometimes you get caught up in numbers when you do that. No, just play well. The numbers will happen, things will happen, everything will be that way. And I thought, he, I thought he did that last week. Go to left, cease, and then Cole down front. You've talked before about the standard for your program, mm -hmm. and you've touched on the standard Alabama set not only for the SEC but for college football. So since you played them the last time, do you feel you've Close that gap, and if so, why? Well, and what do you have to do to continue that? Well, I think we got to continue to recruit well. We got to continue to coach well, and we got to be, understand to build the fundamental culture of what we do, and also stay a little healthy and uh, and what we do to get guys get experience and have the numbers to play. But I think we're recruiting really well. But I think they're a very good team. Uh, whether we've closed the gap or not, I feel confident in the guys we have and what we do, and where we can go in the future of this game, not just this year, but future of where we're going and how we're recruiting and the things we have. And hopefully we'll be able to close that gap. But they're doing a great job. Down front, Cole, then to the back, Mike, and then Brent, you wrap us up. Jimbo, when you look at Alabama, they're not just a factor when it comes to recruiting talent. They also are with coordinators as well and how the coordinators consistently change. Have you noticed anything different from what they've run last year with Steve or what they're running underneath Bill? And has the adaptability of what Nick's been able to do with coordinators been part they're of going success? To, they're going to run their, their, their offensive and defensive systems in place. Those guys come in and run that system. And it's uh, – it was. Uh, I'll get into it later. But it's. Uh, it's. It's. I know that system very well. They do it. They do it well. Those guys are going to come in. And that's the way he wants to play, and that's the way they're going to play. And uh, we've got good players, and that and that allows the consistency of it. Where you don't, because if you if you let that go when you're, if you're not having coordinators and you're constantly changing systems, it's hard to create continuity. It's hard to create continuity that way when your system constantly flips. And they're very similar. Now they may feature some different plays this year than they did last year based off talent. Or players, or you know, when they had the four, had four, the, the four first round picks and at uh, receiver, but they still got really good ones right now too. But they play a little different, but it's still the same scheme, it's still the same. Go back behind the lights, Mike, and then Brent, you wrap us up. Coach, when you guys go through a losing streak, even if it's just two games, how beneficial is it to have some some veteran guys on the team to help keep them around the locker? Well, you do, and guys have been through things and understand they're more mature and and then understand that I always say things are never as good as they seem, and never as bad as they seem. You have to, and and, they're, and if they're going to change, you have to change them. And I think the veteran guys help the young guys with that because I think young people get so outcome oriented, just like everybody does. We come outcome oriented, and the way you change the outcome is change the fundamental day to day process of being fundamentally sound and and being able to play that way consistently down in, down out. And like you say, the other day, if we make one more play, we're in good shape. But a lot of the, all those games, that's the way they all get to, whether you win them or lose them. If you'll go back and look at most of your games when you're playing the SEC competition or big competition, it gets down to one or two plays. And you've got to be able to make them and execute at those key times. And I think older guys can help our young guys explain that to them and help them get through it. Brent, you'll wrap us up. You have that. Uh, talking about that sustained success at Alabama, mm -hmm. it, it comes through depth. Do you feel like – well, depth you and still, consistency of play. Okay, in terms of how do you feel like your depth is coming along? Maybe the past two games have shown you still have a little ways to go on that front. Yeah, we do, there. and we have injuries. I mean, in our injuries where we're at and having some guys that, you know, you wish uh, could could have grew up before they have to get thrown in there, but they're in there and they're having to play, and, and that's part. But that's football. That's You don't know when those times are going to come. I think we're building much better depth, much better depth than what we're doing, and, 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 and guys in the program longer that understand – what we're trying to do in the schemes and the systems, just like, you know, that we're trying to establish. And uh, Miles Jones, did he undergo My, surgery? Miles, which, Miles, Miles underwent surgery. Like I say, on offense, you got Luke, uh, Haynes, Chapman is still out, Hez is still out. Uh, you got Miles who underwent, and you also have uh, Brian George who, will be, who won't be with us the rest of the year. Did George undergo surgery? Not or? yet. Okay. He may. He may. And where we're at. Appreciate that update. Mm -hmm. All right, Coach, thanks.